Good evening to the, all the aspirants of the All India Bar Examination 17th Cohort 2022. Yes, please read what I posted on the screen. Please read what I posted on the screen. No, Good evening is... to the aspirants of All India Bar Examination hyphen Roman 17 2022. This one, sir. Okay, <laughs> doesn't matter. You can read this one. Okay. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Namaskar. Habariza Ashubhi. Anakum. Professor Dr. Muhammad Sahib Hussain, Professor of Law School, School of Law, Malimbi. Sir, it's a post box 307 Street. Augustine University of Tanzania, Mwanza, Tanzania, East Africa. It is not the street, Saint. Sir, it's Saint. Okay. Saint Augustine University of Tanzania, that is Malimbe. Okay, now let us uh, come to our point of study. And in this class that we are going to deal, the All India Bar Examination, the cohort, as I told you. And uh, today class is uh, Civil Processor Code, Multiple Choice Questions. Okay, let me read the first question. A decree always follows options. Number one, judgment and is based upon a decree. Second, second decree and is based upon a judgment. Third, judgment and is based upon a order. Fourth option, judgment and is based upon a judgment. Which one is the correct one? A decree always follows. Yes. So option three. Judgment no. and is based on an order. No. See, I will I will give the even proof I will show you. Let me show you the proof. A decree always follows judgment is based upon a judgment. See, did you read it? Read what I posted on the screen. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A decree always follows judgment and is based upon a judgment. Ah, what is the option here? Fourth, sir. Fourth is the right answer for the first question. So now let us go to the second question. A decree is of three kinds, namely, number one, preliminary decree, number two, final decree, number three, partly preliminary and partly final, four, all of the above. Sir, it's option four, sir. Yes, you are right. All of the four is the right answer. Because if the preliminary decree is there, final decree is there, partly preliminary and partly final also there. Hence the answer is all of the above. The third question. Yes, unmute and read. Third question. The decree does not contain option one, the outcome of the suit. Option two, conclusively determines. Option three, exclusively determines. Option four, the rights of the parties. I say does not contain. The decree does yes, not sir. contain. All three will be belongs to contains. But only one is does not contain. What is the one which is does not contain? If you don't know, you say pass on. I will give the answer. Pass on, sir. Third, exclusively determines, which does not contain the exclusively determines. Other definite decree contains the outcome of the suit, conclusive determination, the right of the parties. The fourth question, according to the section 2, subsection 2 of the Code of Civil Procedure 1908, decrees are divided into three categories and one not among them. The following four, one not among them. Find out which is not the category of the decree. One is not 
the decree of the crime. Number one, preliminary decree. Number two, final decree. Number three, exclusively preliminary and exclusively final decree. Four, partly preliminary and partly final decree. Sir, option three, sir, exclusively preliminary and exclusively final. Because I already go, gave there at the time and the type of the decrees. If I put this question there, naturally it will be hard at the time to you. <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. At least I want to see the memory. Okay, now the fifth question. The decree is dash. Indispensable, number one. Number two, an absolute requisite. Number three, intermediate direction. Number four, both one and two. A decree is indispensable, yes, definitely. A decree is an absolute requisite, yes. And the third one is not, hence the answer is fourth, both one and two is the answer for the fifth question. Now let us see that sixth question, which is not the contents of a decree. Number one, the suit's number. Number two, the names, description and registered address of the parties. Number three, the particular of the party's claims or defense. Number four, the plaintiff's signature on the decree. I say this is not, not the content of a decree. Other three are the content of the decree, but only one among the four is not the content four. of the decree. Yes. Four. Yes, the fourth is the right answer because... I removed there the judge, I put the plaintiff signature. The feedback we will see it here. The feedback content of the decree is a decree always follows the judgment because supplementary questions they may ask in this way are coincided with the it and contains the suit's number. Every suit has a particular number. The names and description of the registered address of the parties. The particulars of the parties claim for the defense. The relief or the remedy granted to the agreed party. The total, so the, the total amount cost incurred in the suit and the judgment date pronouncement delivery of the date of the judgment then the judge's signature so i removed the judges i put the plaintiff the judge's signature on the decree so the judge's signature is an essential and indispensable element of any decree the signature of the judge delivering the judgment is an essential requisite seventh question rule six capital a Order dash of code of civil procedure 1908 states that a decree shall be drawn within stipulated days of the judgment. Now, which order says? Number one, Roman 20. Number two, Roman 15. Number three, Roman 10. Number four, Arabic numeral 20. Which one is the correct answer in the order? Answer is number one, 20, Roman 20. Roman 20 is the answer, not Arabic num number 24. It is the number one option is the right answer. So next question, eighth question, rule 6a. Order 20 of the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908, states that a decree shall be drawn within dash day of the judgment. How many days? 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, 25 days. Yes. How Option many days? 1, sir. No. Option 2. 15 days. Okay. At least 15 days should be there. After the judgment, 15 days time a decree should be made it over there. So that is. So supplementary question. Decree come first or judgment come first? Judgment, sir. Judgment come first. Yes. 
Rule 60, 6A, Order 20 of the Code of Civil Procedure 1998 states that a decree shall be drawn within 15 days of the judgment. An appeal can be favored or preferred without filing a copy of a decree if it is not drawn within 15 days of the judgment. There is a feedback. Ninth question. Yes, anyone can unmute and read. A judgment does contain option one, the issues involved, option two, law of the case, option three, the evidence brought by the parties, option four, finding on issue based on evidence on and arguments. Yeah, does not actually, does contain, no, does not contain, a judgment does not contain. Ravindra Babu, Ravindra Babu Garu. Okay, okay. TV Okay, okay. A judgment does not contain what? The issue involved? Number two, the law of the case. Number three, the evidence brought by the parties. Number four, finding on the issues based on the evidence and arguments, which is not belong to the judgment. Sir, Yes. Answer is? Option, option two, sir, law of the case. Law of the case. Now, what is the exact uh, right uh, answer there? Facts of the case. See, a judgment okay. contains the facts of the case, not law of the case. The issues involved, the evidence brought by the parties, finding and issues within parentheses based on the evidence and arguments. So that is the feedback. It is not law of the case. It is a facts of the case. So, 10th question. Every judgment shall not include. I say shall not include. Means one is not relevant. Other three are relevant. Number one, a summary of the pleadings. Number two, issues, findings on each issue. Number three, ratio descendant mostly obited dicta rarely. The writ granted by the court. No, ratio residency is there, or the obeyed dicta is there, but the most cases is the ratio residency, but very less cases obeyed dicta that cannot be used as a precedent. See, the writ granted by the court, I said, it is a civil court, the writs will be granted only by the High Court and Supreme Court. So, every judgment shall include a summary of the pleadings, issues, finding on the each issue, ratio residency, and the relief. It is the relief, not the writ. So I removed the writ and I put the, I removed the relief and put the writ. So I framed it in that way. The relief granted by the court, not the writ granted by the court. Okay, next question, 11th question. Rule dash order 20 Roman of Code of Civil Procedure 1998 provides a judge with the right to pronounce the judgment. Now, which rule says? Rule 1, Rule 2, Rule 3, or Rule 4? Rule 1, sir. No. Judgments when, judgment when pronounced, amendments of orders of 20, not sir. Okay. No, Rule 2. Rule 2. It's the Rule 2, order 20 of the Code of Civil Procedure. Okay, if you, if you have the doubt, now I will show you the clarity so that suppose i may be wrong also well as framing but let me come to our point just so that we can see that what is the right also and what is the wrong also oh this cannot be made why this cannot be made net is not there if the net is not there how it is functioning net should be there Sir, I think power to pronounce judgments written by judges. That link is not working, sir. No, 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 no. Achha, sir. That link is not working. Okay, okay. Now I will make it in a different way. Because I want to say the clarity to you that which one is the right answer for that question. Yeah. Paste, I say enter. Yes, now it is reading. Yeah. Oh, again, it is not. Okay, better what I do, 
because bifurcation just to show the question sir what is the question sir clear yeah question is rule dash order 20 of the code of civil procedure 1988 provides a judge with the right to pronounce the judgment under which rule then i made the action option 1 2 3 4 rule 2 sir ah. rule 2 i said rule 2 somebody got rule 1 yes, then i checked it then i found it is not working it is coming over there but doesn't matter let us see now it is very much clear that rule 2 says the 12th question judgments of other courts shall contain the following but one among four is not see there three are very much relevant for the other courts judgments but one is not relevant over there now option number 1 summary of the pleadings which is a concise statement of the case number 2 issues which are the points of determination three law on each issue and the decision there on four ratio decision d reason for such a decision which one is the correct answer which is not related one among them is option. not related to the judgment of the other courts what is that leading only no summary of the pleadings it's not related to the court no it is there is there yes summary pleading without it how the judgment will come out this should, should be there as which are points of determination with the proof and here you repeat you repeat is the number 3 was there yes number 3 number 3 there is not the law on each issue it is the finding on each issue it is not the law on the each issue it is the finding on the each issue that is a, so i removed the findings and i put the law then i said which shall not contain the following but one among them four is not i said in the negative way that i asked the question because sometimes not sometimes many times they ask the negative way so that you will be confused so law the three is the option which is not connected to actually the what are the summary proceedings feedback is summary of the pleadings which is a, is a concise statement of the case and there the issues which are the points of determination findings on each issue and the decision there on ratio is d reason for such a decision and the remedy which is of the relief granted so these are there definitely in each judgment okay can anyone unmute and read the third question can anyone and read the third question sorry 13th question can two clause six foreign judgment means one the judgment of a high court of the any state the judgment of a supreme court of india the judgment of foreign court and the fourth one is where is the fourth one the fourth one yeah. is the judgment of the court this is the foreign court sir foreign court is the third one is the correct answer third one is the correct answer <laughs> a foreign court which gives the judgment it is called the foreign judgment and yes. that is the foreign court third is the right answer okay now the 14th question section 13 embodies the principle of the res judicata in your foreign judgments it embodies the principle of dash that a judgment delivered by the foreign court of the competent jurisdiction can be executed and enforced in india number 1 municipal law number 2 international law number 3 private international law number 4 not 15 number 4 public international law yes which one is the correct answer public international law international law or public international law i think both one no maybe principles of natural justice sir actually no because uh, this is uh, a foreign a foreign country man would be there when the dispute starts over there so two countries are there where the two countries legal systems are different so that will be resolved with the private international law okay between between the two individuals, no, sir, individual, no, the two individuals yes between the two individual of different countries yeah individuals is private international law. if it's ah, two countries the, sir, then ah, foreign courts of the competent jurisdiction can be executed and enforced in india and enforced can be in india because the judgment of the foreign court can be as it is enforced in india because the judgment is the same either the judgment in the usa or a judgment in the india 
at that instance we can directly take it at the judgment that is the recognition and uh, enforcement of the foreign judgment that will come over there is it clear yes sir if it's individual it's private international yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yes sir it is implied in the question because it is related to gpc we should imply yes, it is yes, uh, yes. related to between uh, two persons because, sir. because it is not a public international law because the civil procedure leads only to the the civil cases are there hence when you say civil natural we will say private international law because the state is there we can say the public international law is it clear is it clear Yes, sir, clear, sir. It's clear. Okay. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Because it is CPC related. Eh? CPC related. No, we are discussing the CPC. <laughs> so that's my point. And especially section 13, you read it and you will get all the information because it shows that a foreign judgment can be used as it is in India provided these conditions should be fulfilled. And the foreign judgment cannot be taken into consideration if these conditions are not fulfilled. So there, section 13 will give the clear idea about the CPC. Okay, now let us see the 15th question. The rules of the private international law of each state differ in many respects, but by dash, certain rules are recognized as a common civilized jurisdiction. Number one, the cooperation of the nations. Number two, the coordination of the nations. Number three, the comity of the nations. Number four, the understanding of the nations. And I am sure I can challenge also. You cannot find such a question anywhere. It is my open challenge. It is my open challenge. Because I am teaching the private international law here. And I, I taught that course around, around about at least, at least we can say 10 years. Private international law. It is a, it is, it is a brainchild of mine, this question. Yes, anyone? Comity, because there are two principles are there. When you want to say, I give the respect to your country judgment and you give the respect to my country judgment. And that is the comedy principle number one. And if there is no understanding between the two countries, then the theory of obligation will come into the picture. Because two into two is called four, either in Tanzania or in India or in Japan. Am I right? Am I right? Say yes. Anyway, there is a problem, I believe. That's why you could not... Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, so, if the law of obligation will come because the natural justice are there. The judgment is given like that. Two into two is called four. Everywhere, the general principles are the same. Hence, law of obligation should be there. Even though there is no committee, the law of obligation, theory of the obligation will work over there and the judgment will be followed as it is in other country. Okay, now let, let us see the 16th question. When foreign judgment is not co conclusive, a foreign judgment shall be conclusive as to my matter, thereby directly adjudicated upon between the same parties or between the parties under whom they are or any of them claim litigating under the same title except the following four, but one among the four is not relevant, not connected, which it is. This is nothing but can we use the foreign judgment in our country? Yes, and you can use it, sir. Why? Because it's showing in arbitration also foreign judgment can be used. Clearly. Yes, I have given the option here. I have given the option yes. which is not connected. Which is not connected, okay. I have given the option here which is not connected. See, we can use it, no doubt. But if some conditions are fulfilled over there, like which I have given here, where it hasn't been given on the merits Natural justice, sir. No, no, no. no. Now, see, I gave the four options here, where it has been pronounced ah. a court of the competent jurisdiction, where it has not been given on the merit of the... Ah, one is case. not relevant. Ah. Not relevant, I want to say. And where it appears on the face of the proceeding to be founded on an incorrect view of the international law, refusal to recognize the law of India in case where which law is applicable, and D, where the proceedings in which judgment was obtained are opposed to the natural justice. See... You cannot use the foreign judgment in our country when the competent court has not given the judgment. 
where it has been pronounced by a court of competent jurisdiction. No, I removed not. Where it has been pronounced not by a competent, the court of competent jurisdiction. At the time, we cannot uh, use uh, the foreign judgment in our country. I removed the not, that's all. See, here I did. Feedback. When foreign judgment is not conclusive and the condition C, I highlighted not. And there I removed the not. And uh, here, when the not is there, that is, yes, we cannot use the foreign judgment as it is in India. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I appreciate. I appreciate. I told you now I am teaching the <laughs> private international. Yes, that's why I could yes, easily sir. make it out. Okay, now, now the 70th question. Can anyone unmute? Narendra Babu, I am getting the sound from your side. Can anyone unmute and read the 17th question? In which case it was decided on the ground of foreign judgment? Not on merits. Yes. RMB Valachi Achi versus RMA Ram Ramanada Chitra. Ramanadan Chitiyar Gurdas Man versus Mohinder Singh Bhar ING Investment Trust versus Raja of Polikoti Laj. What is the fourth one? Laliji Raja and Sons versus Pom Ansari Natura. Natura, yeah. No idea at all, sir. Uh, I said not. Maybe fourth one, sir. Not. Uh, it is the fourth second, one. Okay. Second one. Gurudas Man versus Mahinder Singh Brar. That is the right answer. It is decided on the ground of foreign judgment, not on merit. It is not on the merit it is given over there. Means there will be certain loopholes are there. So that is decided in the case of the Gurudas Man versus uh, Mohinder Singh Brawl. So, 18th question. In which case, says foreign judgment obtained by fraud cannot be implemented or followed in, in India? Suppose the foreign judgment uh, come out with the fraud and that cannot be implemented or the followed in India. Which case are decided? Number one, China Shipping Development Company Limited versus Lanyard Foods Limited. Number two, SP Chengalavaraya Naidu versus Jagannath. Three, Satya versus Tej Singh. Four, only two and three, right? Four, sir. Four, you are right. SP Chengalavaraya Naidu versus Jagannath and Satya versus Tej Singh. Yes, because we did not use it. The reason is it is foreign judgment obtained by the fraud. And hence, we cannot be used in India. So now, 19th question. There are some basic essentials which are required not to be fulfilled while submitting the affidavit in the court. I say not. N-O-T, not. Number one, it must be a declaration by a person. Number two, it shall not have any inferences. It shall contain the facts only. Number three, it must be in the third person. Number four, it must be in writing. I am speaking about the affidavit. Affidavit is... Third, sir. Huh? Third. Yes. What is the right answer? It should be... In first, the first person. Answer. First person. <laughs> I removed the first person and I put the third person there. <laughs> the feedback you see, there are some basic essential which are required to be fulfilled while submitting the affidavit in the court. It must be a declaration by a person. It shall not have any inferences. It shall contain the facts only. It must be in the first person. And I removed the first person, I put the third person there. It must be in writing. It must be statement which are taken under oath or affirmed before or any other authorized officer or a magistrate. And a supplementary questions may ask it by checking anyone, either asking the negative way or asking the positive way. Is it clear? Yes, anyone can unmute and read. 20th question. Quick. As per study of the Evidence Act, affidavits are not considered as option one proof, option two relevant, option three irrelevant, and option four evidence. Evidence. Evidence is the right answer. And uh, 
because we don't say proof we just say of course relevant is relevant we can say but it is the affidavit where the affidavit we cannot say relevant and irrelevant because it is a document of course certain things we can say relevant and irrelevant but the appropriate here is only the evidence okay 21st question in that interlocutory applications like the interim jury injunction the appointment of the receiver attachment of the property wherein the right of the parties are not determined conclusively can be decided on the basis of the dash number 1 notary number 2 documentary evidence number 3 affidavit number 4 none of the above documentary, documentary evidence no none of the above sir no if by affidavit we can prove it we can do it we decide it there it can be used as affidavit here the affidavit is the right answer here so one of the case law i don't know whether you could make it out or not the bombay high court in the case of dash observed that when a decree has been pronounced by a court of a non reciprocating foreign territory it cannot be executed unless the fresh suit has been filed by the decree holder on that foreign decree or on the original case of action or both which case law it is decided Number one, China Shipping Development Company versus Lanyard Food Limited. Number two, Kitplay Industry Limited versus California Pacific Trading Corporation. Number three, Marin Geotechnic LLC versus Coastal Marin Constructions and Engineering Limited. Four, Intesta San pa San Paolo's SPA versus Video Can Industry Limited. Third. third is the right answer marine geotechnic llc versus coastal marine constructions and engineering limited because i say non reciprocating foreign territory with the reciprocity is there there is no problem at all when the non reciprocating would be there at the time a fresh case should be filed over there okay next which is not the mode of executing a decree under the cpc i say not means other three are relevant but one is not relevant which is not the mode of executing the decree decree under the cpc number 1 by delivery by delivery of any property mobile or immobile specifically decreed number 2 by sale of the property with or without attachment of the property if the property is situated within the jurisdiction of the court then it has the power to attach the property number 3 by keeping behind the bar that person who violated the rules and regulations of the law of the land fourth by arrest and uh, detention however this mode should not be exercised without giving reasonable opportunity to the judgment debtor in the form of a show cause notice as to why should not be imprisoned one is not so behind yes. the bar yeah there is no behind the bar actually it's the third yes. so i put it in yes. different way that we are not supposed to keep the behind the bar no no sir yes yes okay so here behind the bar is not the mode of it we have to make it out so that is extra which i put it over there that is not relevant for the execution of a decree 24th question yes can anyone unmute and read 24th question jurisdiction is not decided mainly on the basis of peculiar value local limits of the court the color of subject matter the subject matter of the court the third one is a correction the color of the subject matter i made it very easy this one actually i want to complicate it but i say let us see that what they will make it out <laughs> because nobody will see the color of it but we can say the quantity but sometimes quantity also count because when the quantity is measured in the terms of the money so it comes under the pecuniary value so i did not get the suitable word that's why i use the word color okay anyway it doesn't matter 25th question so the court before taking the cognizance of offense the following points need not be i say not to be taken into consideration that means three are taken into consideration one is not taken into consideration what is that one number one the pecuniary value of the suit number two the nature of the case number three the territorial limits of the court number four the number of the plaintiffs involved in the case number 4 sir number 4 it clearly shows because other things are very much relevant over there but it seems to be odd over there then we can easily make it out it is the number 4 is the answer for that one so 26 question which statement is wrong 
among the four following. Yes, now you tell me. This is very interesting. Huh? Which statement is wrong among the four following? Number one, the words civil is not defined in the section 9 itself. Number two, the civil court shall have the jurisdiction to try all the suits except the suit which is impliedly or expressly barred. Three, the basic purpose of the board impliedly is that court should deal with the matter which causes injuries to the public or which is against the public will. Fourth, the basic purpose of board impliedly is that court should not deal with the matter which causes injuries to the public or which is against the public will. Sir, option three, sir. Option three is the right answer because the basic purpose of the board impliedly is that the court should deal with the matter which causes injuries to the public or which is against the public will. So that would be the actually should not deal. So I put the should deal. So that is not connected with that one. So that is the answer we can make it out. I appreciate that your sharpness. In the case of the PMA Metropolitan versus Moran Mar Marthoma, the Supreme Court not observed one of among the four statement other statement supreme court observed but one statement the supreme court did not observe it number one the phrases used in the section nine has a positive and negative meaning two the earlier part has a wider sense and it covers all the matter of the civil nature on the hand the later part has a wider sense as it is excludes the matter which is implied be expressly barred but I am getting the sound from the people. They are, did not mute it. Challa Kotaya. Mute it. Challa Kotaya. Challa Kotaya. He did not mute it. I will say. So, the one explanation mentioned in the section 9 expressed the legislative intention. Number four, it cast an obligation on the court to exercise the jurisdiction for the enforcement of the private rights. So one is not among the court observation. What is that one? A little difficult it is because if the question asked in that manner and a bit we have to worry it. Here, here the feedback I have given, see. Actually, no court had a discretion to refuse the matter with the false under the section. And it is a mandatory to the cognizance matter because word shall is used, which means it is a mandatory section. So which one is not here? The right answer is, I believe it is uh, the one explanation mentioned in the section 9. It is not the one explanation. There may be the minimum two explanations should be given over there. I will remove the two, I put the one explanation. So that is the not relevant. That means Third question is not relevant, but other are very much relevant and the Supreme Court has made such an observations. But when you come to the matter of the one, expl the one explanation mentioned in the section 9, it's not the two explanations mentioned in this. 9 is an important factor. And these are the other observations of the Supreme Court. A supplementary question may be asked also. Supplementary question, please. These are the other Observation of the Supreme Court. Now let us see the Supreme Court held that civil court has inherent jurisdiction in all types of the civil matter as per the section 9 of the CPC. Unless the suit is expressly or impliedly barred was observed in the case of, in which case law it is observed, the civil court having inherent jurisdiction to entertain the civil cases. Number one, Prem Lata Agrawal versus Lakshman Prasad Gupta and others. Number two, PMA Metropolitan versus Moran Mar Marothama. Three, State of AP versus Manjeti Lakshmi Kant Rao. And four, none of the above. Two, sir. Yes. Two, PMA Metropolitan. No, I intentionally made it. Actually, it is not none of the above, it is. There is a different case law is there. It is none of the above. I will show you what the case law it is. Because I removed that case law, but in the feedback I have not given. Actually, I was supposed to give in the feedback. What is the case law which is given over there? I removed intentionally to keep the none of the above. Where it is given section 19. No, the case law name should have given. 
the court has the inherent power, High Court, under the CPC 151. Of course, anyway, that's which I cited over there, the case law is not mentioned, and I removed the case law, and uh, that's why intentionally to keep it uh, the none of the above. So it is not observed in that cases at all. So now 29th question is, jurisdiction is not decided mainly on the basis of, I, I, I repeat, jurisdiction is not decided mainly on the basis of, number one, pecuniary value, number two, local limits of court, number three, the subject matter of the court, number four, forum convenience to the plaintiff. Fourth one, sir, fourth one. Fourth forum one. Forum convenience, sir. That is the forum shopping is not there. It comes only the private international law. The forum convenience or forum shopping comes only in the private international law where the discretion is given to the plaintiff to file a case wherever he likes and wherever it is convenient to him. And that way that we will entertain the private international law. But the civil courts in civil matters, in, in matters it will not be there. Okay, now let us see, but in the Motor Vehicle Act the cases, yes, it is there. Where the victim is resided over there from, in that court, they can file a case, even though the accident happened in the other place. So, 30th question is, in the case of Dash, it was held that the High Court can only interfere when there is involves a substantial question of law. If there is a substantial question of law, the High Court the so motor can interfere. In which case law? Anna Purani Ammal vs. G. Tanga Gopalam and second A. Srinivas Rao and others vs. Government of Andhra Pradesh. Three, Neeta vs. Shivadayal Kapoor and others. And the fourth, Brijlal Ramdas vs. Govindaram Gorandas Seksarya. One, sir. One is the right answer. Anna Purani Ammal vs. G. Tanga, Goa, Tanga Gopalam. There the the, the court of high court interfered and uh, where the substantial matter was involved over there in the case law. The first one is the right answer for the 30th question. And 31st question is the nature and the scope of revisional jurisdiction. See, I am speaking revisional jurisdiction, not review. Revisional jurisdiction in, is different from appellate jurisdiction. If an order impugned is a revisable it cannot be converted into an appeal if there is no presentation of the appeal in the eye of the law as seen in the case of number one official trustee versus Sachindranath. number two om prakash versus dwaraka prasad number three tk ramajan ramanujam pillai versus subramaniam four munshi singh versus tularam number three sir no, it is a Munshi Singh versus Tularam case law that is the nature and the scope of the revisional jurisdiction is different from appellate jurisdiction. If an order impacted is a re revisable, it cannot be converted into appeal. No, we cannot convert it into appeal if there is no presentation of the appeal in the eye of the law. If there is no ground local stand I is there for the appeal for the eye of the law, it is observed in the case of the Munshi Singh versus Tularam case law. Thirty second question. The law commission states that the following should be kept in mind while accessing the original power of the court. Yes. What are the things should be keep in mind for the original power of the court? The law commission said. Number one, the ruling of the court is not absolute unless the party to whom it applies can show cause why it should not apply. This is uh, rule Nisi and should not be issued except under careful and strict scrutiny. Number two, the record of the subordinate court should be called for the where, where no stay is granted and where it is necessary required copies are to be produced. Number three, all efforts should not be made to dispose of the revision within two or three months where a stay is granted. Number four, none of the above. Uh, of course, I removed certain number three, sir. Hmm? Three. None three. No, I removed or not. I put over there that the actual answer is it is none of the above. None of them. Because I made the removed some of them. See, if we, if you see it now, you will know what are the. I, actually, I should supposed to give in the feedback what I removed, what I kept it over there. 
because I told you, no, it is not a copy paste. It is me only. I developed this a original code of civil jurisdiction, IP leaders. Yeah, from the here I have taken the law commission. Liu. The law commission he has made it very much clear that these are the things should be done. Oh, it's taking blood of time. Oh, blog, it's not proper way. The proper blog, I did not keep it over there, it seems. So, uh, that site may be down, sir, now. Yeah, 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 I, I think it may be. No, I actually, I want to copy this one, but I could not make it because they very lengthy file it is. Very lengthy file. Mm. So, anyway, that uh, I removed the knot and I, where the knot is there, I put the where there will no knot, I put the knot and I made everything changed and so that uh, none of the above is the right answer for the question which I made over here. So this is the way and when you come to the matter of the course outline again, I mean to say what are, oh, this is not the, yes, all India bar examinations, yeah. So, topic constitution law, we did it, IPC, Indian Pillar, we did it, CRPC yesterday, we did it, CPC today, we did it, we did it, and tomorrow class is Evidence Act, 8 marks. So, we did it till now, 10 marks, 8 marks, 10 marks, 10 marks, 8 marks. Please read and come to the class and make the class as a participatory class so that you could remember it well, because the impact would be well, well when you participate in it, even though it is wrong, you can give the answer, at least you can hunch it. Uh, but that hunching by logical reasoning, if you could do so, I'm sure that you will be successful. The Evidence Act is 8. Thank God that there is no minus marks are there. If the minus marks are there, I believe very few. It is like a tough examination because they can ask from any nook and corner also. Not provisionally, they, they say Evidence Act. They can ask any, any section from anywhere. So that would be the thing. And hence, and try to develop a, such a software in your brain so that when you look at it, the option, you can easily pick it out that, yes, this is the right answer because the software will run in a such a manner which is right and which is wrong, which I am developing you to learn the things. With this, I would like to stop my today lecture. Of course, if you don't stop also, it automatically stops over there. If anything that you want to ask me, you can ask me. Yes. Any questions? Right? No questions. No. Okay, now I'll stop it. Sir, my question. Sir, my question. I think you are hanging. Yes, please, Pandranga Rao, speak. Sir, my question is whether the notification, I have not seen any notification in AAB, no, sir. Why do you worry about the notification? You tell me. You tell me. You prepare no, no. yourself enough. But no, no, I am preparing, sir. We are preparing it. But when when will be roughly the exam point of view, sir? Actually? End of the you month, they September, said. October? What is meant by end of the month? Either maybe 27th, Which end of the 28th, or 29th, or 30. If it is on the 31st, even 31st also. This it, month, sir? end of the month when they say it will be conducted. Okay, okay. Suppose if it is not feasible to them and if they will conduct in the next month, can you file a case? No, no, no. We cannot, sir. Definitely we cannot. Okay. So now you will participate, read and make it ready in what way the question may ask you. You will be in a position to give the answer and prepare yourself and the time is given over there, well and prepare it. Of course, we are we are not going to get A grade, B grade, C grade because we are going to get only the 40 marks if I had not be missing.
Yeah. 